Welcome back to my channel. My name is Casey and in this video we're going to be looking at accessing an internal resource from outside of our network. Now this resource can be something like a camera system. It could be a shared drive. In my case it's actually going to be a Plex media server. So that media server is on my network and I want to be able to access it when I'm outside of my home. Whether I'm at the doctor's office or just wherever I happen to be. I want to be able to access it from my phone or um, a tablet or even another computer. Now networks will automatically deny any type of traffic that it is not that it is not expecting. So this is unsolicited traffic. Our firewall does not know uh, about this traffic, so it's going to automatically drop it. And this is by default because you don't want other people just typing in your IP address and being able to get access to um, your own resources. So what we need to do is we need to tell our firewall that this is something we want to happen. So before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup on my end. Um, this is strictly for me. Um, you don't have to follow along with any of these steps. But you see here where I have my seven interfaces that are all on a single hardware switch. Uh, for my case, I actually have multiple switches in multiple rooms. And I am going to set them up on their own internal network or an internal, a different subnet. So in that case, I'm just going to go ahead and drop all of these with the exception of one and I'm going to give it the name of main switch because this will be my main switch. I'm going to change the IP address to 10.1.1.1 24 and then we're going to get rid of this DHCP scope and add the uh, the default one here is going to be just fine. It will be acting as a DHCP server. And we're going to hit OK. I'm going to get booted out of the firewall because our management port is no longer 192.168.1.99. It is now 10.1.1.1. Now, because things don't happen instantly, um, I probably have not received a new IP address yet. Now, I could manually set this up, but I'm just going to speed things along and uh, forget my DHCP scope and re uh, get a new one. So I'm going to do ipconfig slash release. And then we're going to go here and do renew. So this is going to drop my old DHCP uh, information and it's going to pull the DHCP server and get me a new one. In this case, they gave me 10.1.1.2. And so now if I refresh and there we go. Like I said, this step is completely unnecessary, but if uh, that, if you wanted to do something like that, then that's how you would do that. So now what I need to do is, first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at my Plex app on my phone. Um, and you will see that I it is not connected to a Wi-Fi, so it is only, from, uh, only on a... Uh, when, or in this case, the uh, ISP for my cell phone, AT&T. And we're going to open up Plex. And the only thing we have here is the uh, Plex movies that they give us for free just for being a member. Um, if we come over here to our server, we can see that all of this is grayed out and we no longer have access to it. So let's go ahead and close that out. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So what I want to do is, first of all, we're going to come over here to our policy and objects, and we're going to go to virtual IPs. Uh, if you have ever set up port forwarding on a modem, then this is what this is going to do. So we're going to create new virtual IP. We want to give it a name, something that makes sense. So we're just going to call this Plex. The external IP, this is going to be our WAN IP. If you watch my first video, you will know that this is 10.0.0.24. And then our mapped IP address is going to be the IP address of our Plex server on our network. So in this case, it will be 10.1.1.199. Now we want to tell it what port to send our connection to. Uh, by default, Plex uses port 32400. And then we're going to do that for our map port. Okay, so now that we have our virtual IP, so um, what this is saying is that 
when our connection comes in to 10.0.0.24, we want to forward that connection to 10.1.199 on port 32400. So we're going to come over here to our policies. This is still not going to work because remember our policy uh, right now we only have two. So we can go from our LAN to our WAN so we can get out, but anything else is going to be denied. So we need to tell our firewall that we want to accept this unsolicited traffic. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new role. Uh, we're going to name this. So this is coming from our WAN to Plex. Our incoming interface is going to be our WAN. Our outgoing interface is going to be our main switch, our internal. And so what's happening is our connection is coming into our WAN from the internet and then is going out of our LAN port to our actual computers, in this case specifically Plex. So our source, uh, this is going to be any because we don't know where we're going to be when we want to access our Plex server. So we want to allow all connections. And then our destination. Uh, we could technically do all and that would work, but that is definitely a security risk. So which is why we created our um, object here. So this is saying that um, this connection will only go to our Plex IP address. Uh, our service, we're going to allow all, um, but generally you would want to specify the actual service that you're going to allow. So it's probably going to be HTTP or HTTPS, um, maybe even UDP. You would kind of have to do a little bit of research depending on what you're trying to connect to. But for simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and select all. We're going to allow. We're going to disable NAT. And of course, we want to log our traffic in the event that there's a problem and then hit OK. And now you can see here we have our role. And just like I said in my last video, these roles uh, go in order for which they are received. So if the firewall uh, will check this to see if it matches the traffic, if it doesn't, it moves on to this one. And then finally, it would just automatically deny if it doesn't um, have uh, a role set up for whatever traffic that it's receiving. So let's go ahead and take a look back at our Plex app and let's see if we now have access to it so let's uh, go ahead and find it here and let's open up our plex and you can see here we now have full access to our movies and tv shows and everything is uh, populated once again and we can come into our movies and we can see there we go we now have access to our movies we are still not connected to the wi-fi only on the at&t network and uh, our firewall is now allowing that traffic and you would do the same thing whether it would be a dvr or some other type of internal resource just make sure you match the ip address and the port number Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you leave a comment if you have a question. Uh, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe if you feel like it. And I'll catch you on the next one.